Okay, so we have been talking about solving some exponential equations and uh, basically had two ways. One of them is the mustache property, of course. Base is the same. If you can make the bases the same, then the exponents are the same. And then the other one is just do the inverse, which is a logarithm. So here's your chance to practice a couple of these questions. By couple, I mean four. Um, <clears throat> so go ahead and pause it. Go ahead, reach up there with the mouse, click, pause, go ahead, pause, okay. All right, let's see how successful you were. So I uh, separated these out here, slide by slide. And on the first one, this is one where you can take the eight and the 32 and write them in terms of the same base. Now you couldn't make 32 uh, a power of eight, but if you were clever enough, you could write it as a power of two on both of them because eight is two to the third and 32 is two to the fifth. Once you did that and you distributed your exponents, then you could set the exponents equal to each other and you get oops, seven over 12. Okay, over here on number two, there's no way to turn five into a power of two, so why not just take the log of both sides? You can take the log base two of both sides if you want to. My preference is always natural log, whatever. So I take the natural log of both sides that exponent comes out front, and then I could divide by the log of log, natural log of two, and that does my base changing for me, and I get 2.3 approximately. All right, on number three, it's the same thing as uh, the previous one. You can't write seven, or you can't write uh, 15 as a power of seven, so just take the log of both sides. Whether it's log base seven, or it's the natural log or the common log, you get to pick whatever should be able to solve it out. This time, you've got to be careful whenever you go to type this into the calculator, though. So whenever you do, make sure that whenever you hit divided by for this division sign, that you start with a set of parentheses for the 9, put 9 times uh, the log of 7. Uh, remember, this kind of opens up parentheses. You need to close those before you hit division. It'll open up parentheses, and you'll have to close it twice on the 7 to enter it incorrectly and you get 0.15. And there's, if there's ever any question, just, just take that answer, plug it back in here and see if it makes the whole thing equal to 15, all right? On number four, uh, an exponential equation involving E, so natural log is the key choice there. Uh, isolate that exponential term, and then take the natural log of both sides, divide it out, push it into the calculator, there you go, negative 5.4-ish. Okay, so here, let's talk about an application, a couple applications of exponential functions and solving an exponential equation. So this is called Newton's Law of Cooling, named after, of course, Isaac Newton. So for a cooling substance, like maybe it's a hot cup of chocolate, like that chick right there is drinking, um, with an initial temperature of T sub zero, or T sub naught, that's initial temperature, what it starts out with, the temperature T, so this is after a time period has passed, after T minutes, can be modeled by, in the, just take a look at that equation right there, in the middle, T is equal to, and in parentheses you have T sub zero minus T sub R. Right down below it says T sub R is the room temperature times e to the negative rt power plus room temperature again, where r is the cooling rate for whatever substance that uh, you're dealing with. Could be that hot chocolate again. So what I want to call your attention to in this equation is that it has e to the negative rt. Just think back to the couple lessons back. That's exponential decay, decay. And what specifically, my pen just stopped working. There we go. DK. And uh, I just put like something coming right close out of her nose. Mm. And now my phone's ringing. Heck. Okay. So what specifically is decaying is the difference between the initial temperature and the room temperature. So just think about this. If I have a hot cup of coffee or chocolate and I sit it on the counter and it's 70 degrees in the room, but the hot cup of coffee is over 100 degrees, then the 
30 degrees temperature difference is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as your cup of coffee gets closer and closer to room temperature. And that's what the equation is doing. That's what it's saying. So let's try to apply that equation to, uh, well, a, a warm mug of hot chocolate. So you warm a mug of hot chocolate to a temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. You leave that warm be beverage on the counter while you go tend to your wailing baby. Not yet, hopefully, but maybe sometime in the future. If the hot chocolate in the mug has a cooling rate of 0.145 and the temperature of the room, the room temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, we want to know how many minutes is it going to take for that hot chocolate to cool down to 30 degrees Celsius. So in this little problem, let's label out all of our little variables here. So this uh, 90 degrees, this is our T sub zero. That's our initial temperature of our cup of, of hot chocolate. All right, the 0.145, that's our cooling rate, so that's R. 20 degrees Celsius is our, our room temperature, that's T sub R. And then finally, the 30 degrees, 30 degrees is what we want the final outcome to be, so that's T. That's what our whole thing is going to be equal to. So let me write that equation again right up top here. So T is equal to, in parentheses, my initial temperature minus my room temperature, e to the negative RT, and it's negative because it's decaying, plus room temperature again. So the capital T, that first number is 30 degrees. That's what we want it to equal. And in parentheses here, our original temperature was 90 minus our room temperature, which is blah, 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 uh, 20, yeah. E to the negative, and my R value is 0.145 T, and then you add your room temperature back to it, which is the, the, the 20, there we go. And for some reason, I forgot a 20 right in here. Okay, so now let's just solve this thing for the T, the time. Subtract the 20 over, I'm going to have 10, equals, and then parentheses here, 90 minus 20, I got 70, e to the negative 0.145t. Divide by the 70, I can go ahead and cancel out my zeros, and I got 1 7th equals e to the negative 0.145t. Now it's exponential. To solve the exponential equation, we're just going to take the natural log both sides, blah, and blah. So, uh, over on the left side, I have the natural log of 1 7th is equal to, and the natural log and the E will cancel out, leaving me with negative 0.145. Pen, start working again. Come on, pen. Come on, pen. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> T, and then finally divide by the negative 0.145. So T is equal to the natural log of 1 7th divided by negative 0.145. Calculator time. So let's see, how long is it going to take to cool this cup of hot chocolate? So natural log inside the parentheses here, 1 divided by 7. Make sure you close those parentheses. Divided by negative 0.145 and we get about 13 minutes. Sure it has some change on the end of it so let's just say this is whoops, approximately 13 minutes. Interesting, very interesting question. Okay so uh, that, that had a cooling rate in it already, 0.145. Um, so the question here on part B, this follow-up, is how could you find a cooling rate for this? If, if you just had a substance, you want to know what its cooling rate was, all you have to do is use that equation and you measure the, t the temperature at two different times. So a starting out temperature and then maybe wait for an hour and another temperature and then use those two temperatures in that cooling rate equation to solve for R this time instead of T because you would already know what the little T was. It'd be like an hour. As a matter of fact, this is how uh, one of the ways that uh, at the scene of a crime they might determine how long someone's been dead based on its cooling rate, the temperature, the ambient temperature, 
wherever it was found and how hot the guy or the girl is still, knowing that the initial temperature of the body is supposed to be 98.6 degrees. So there you go. That's pretty awesome. Not for the dead guy, but whatever. Okay. So uh, a new car costs $25,000. Value of the car decreases by 15% each year. Does this sound familiar? Remember the question that we way, way back in line? We had to put it in the calculator to find out how long it was going to take in order to find it at half of the original value. We don't need that anymore. We can, uh, we can just solve this exponentially. So if we want the car to be worth half of its original value and figure out how long is it's going to take, I'm first going to use this equation. Y is equal to uh, e, 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 forgot something, A times 1 minus R raised to the T power. And I know it's that equation because it doesn't say the word continuous in there. It's not, it's just, uh, where does it say, decreases by 15% each year. It doesn't say continuously. If it did, then you'd have to use PERT. Okay, so half of this number right there, half of it is equal to, say, 12,500. So that's what's going to go in for Y. So 12,500 is equal to... 25,000 times 1 minus my rate, which is going to be 0.85 raised to the t power. And now I'm trying to figure out what the t value is. So divide by the 25,000, that's a half, is equal to 0.85 to the t. And now it's an exponential equation, which we could solve by just taking the, the log of both sides, natural log. Oh. It's like I'm a broken record here, always taking the natural log. All right, let's come up here. So the natural log of a half is equal to, um, it would be the natural log of 0.85 raised to the t. I can bring the t out front. Natural log of a half equals t times the natural log of 0.85. And then divide it so t is equal to the natural log of 1 half, in parentheses, divided by the natural log of 0 0.85. Calculator. Right back over here. It's covering up all my stuff, so let's move it out of the way. So the natural log of 1 divided by 2, close those parentheses, divided by the natural log eh, 0.85. Close them. And I get about 4.27 years. About 4.27 years. Okay, if this was a continuously uh, decreasing problem, like exponential decay using the PERT model, then this is really the same thing as half-life, because we were finding the time that it takes in order to have half the amount that you originally started with. That's the same thing in physics as half-life. Where are we at? Where are we at? Okay. Um, let's go ahead and uh, call it right there and finish this video up.